Hey, this is Asaf Levavi from LeganRef.com and welcome to another video in the Ultimate Beginner Series. In this video, we're gonna learn how to Travis Pick. Travis Picking, in case you don't know, is probably the most important and most prominent finger style picking style. It employs the thumb to keep a steady rhythm, which in most cases is kind of a ragtime rhythm. Ragtime is one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. A weak beat followed by a strong beat. Now, it kind of sounds something like this. Listen to the bass notes. You see, the bass notes just keep going no matter what I play upon them. Now, your goal with the exercises I'm gonna give you in this video, we're gonna go from the simplest exercises to some more advanced exercises. Uh, I'm gonna give you about 20 exercises throughout this video. And uh, your goal with the exercises is to forget about the thumb, okay? You can't play uh, Travis Picking compositions and arrangements if you have to think about the thumb all the time. So the main goal of the exercises and of you practicing this is to forget about the thumb. The thumb movement should be automatic. Okay, now have patience because this takes time. It can take uh, anywhere between a couple of days to a week to a month or even a couple of months. Everybody has their own pace. So just play it slowly, play every exercise slowly until you get the hang of it. Now you can watch this video in various ways. You can uh, watch one exercise, then go practice it, and once that feels comfortable, come back, watch the next exercise. Or you can just watch the entire video, pick the exercises you like, and just practice those. Or watch the entire video, then go uh, over the exercises in order. Any way you want to practice this is fine by me. I've created these exercises um, especially for beginner Travis Pickers. Now, uh, I'm gonna make a lot more uh, videos for Travis Picking exercises, more advanced exercises, but in this video we're gonna tackle the very basic uh, methods of employing the thumb with the rest of the fingers, of course, and then we're gonna check out some finger picking patterns, okay? Using Travis picking. So the simplest exercises will be kind of boring, but starting from exercise five or six, it's gonna become a lot more interesting. So the first exercise, of course, is to use your thumb. Um, just play open strings, no chord yet, Play the E bass and then the A bass, okay, in a steady rhythm, okay? And if that feels comfortable, then you can play Travis Picking, okay? It just takes a bit of more... I can't talk and play. I, I can talk and play, but I can't talk and play when I'm just playing open strings because it bothers my ear. Um, now, the second exercise is the same exercise, only this time you play the E bass and the D bass, okay? It's a jumping Travis picking pattern. Okay? You'll see why when we get to the more advanced exercises, okay? Now, these are your first two exercises. Now, if that sounds awful, then congratulations, you have a good ear, because open strings by themselves tend to sound, you know, it's not music yet. Uh, now, there's a variation to these exercises. Take this part of your hand, put it by the bridge, and palm mute the strings, okay? Now play these two exercises with palm muting. Okay? There's a reason for it. Okay? E, A, E, A, E, A, E, A, E, D, E, D, E, D, E, D. Okay? Now, once you get 
the steady rhythm going and try to accentuate try to accentuate the second beat every time weak note stronger note weaker note stronger note okay try to accentuate try to feel the beat okay okay now you can alternate e a e d e a e d e a e d that's the next exercise now palm muting um, gives you a different sound for example let's play what I played at the beginning I improvise so I'll improvise again and this time I'll use palm muting you see it sounds different it gives it a different feel and if you play it on an electric guitar it sounds awesome listen to Merle Travis himself search for Merle Travis and listen to him Travis pick he palm mutes the uh, the, ba the bass notes sometimes probably most of the time he, he muted it and it sounded awesome so that's another way of playing Travis picking you can play the open bass notes you can play them palm muted now once you used to this E A E D E A E D E A E D you're ready to move on to the more interesting exercises let's put on the E minor chord okay E minor now we're going to start playing Travis Vegging for real. The most important principle of Travis Picking, the secret to all of Travis Picking, is that Travis Picking is binary. What do I mean by binary? I mean that you have either of two options. Either you play the note along with the bass note or you play the note between bass notes these are your only two options okay all of Travis picking relies on this binary option with the bass note or between bass notes okay by the end of this video you'll know what I'm talking about so let's play the first option okay Let's play the bass and then when we play the second bass note, when we play the A string on the second fret, we'll play the chord. We'll play strings one, two, and three together. Okay? So it will sound like this. E and then A with, it's a B note, but it's the A string along with the rest of the chord. So. Okay, and palm muted okay that's the first option with the bass bass chord bass chord bass chord bass chord of course play it slowly if you're not if it's still not natural if it doesn't feel natural yet Okay, and try to keep it short. Try to uh, mute the strings by putting your fingers back upon them. Okay, that's the next exercise. Now, I'm pretty sure you can guess the next exercise. The next exercise is playing the chord between the bass notes. Okay, bass, chord, second bass, chord bass chord second bass chord okay now of course you can play these two exercises with the D string as well so it's okay with the D string this time the D string on two it's an E note so you create an E octave on the bass uh, notes okay so then between them, between the bass notes. Now I know that this doesn't sound very much like Travis picking, but it's still an exercise. We're still in the first phase of this video, so trust me on this. Now 
you can play um, you can play them um, with different bass notes uh, for example e a e d e a e d e a e d okay with palm mute now the second exercise Now, you're done with the very, very basic exercises. From now on, we're going to gradually complicate it. Okay, so, uh, the next exercise will combine these two. What do I mean? I mean this. What did I just do? I played the first chord along with the bass note and then I played the chords between the bass notes. You see, now it starts to sound like Travis picking. So, bass, second bass with a chord. Okay, either the A string or the D string. It's your choice. Now, um, again, confused myself. Bass, bass with a chord bass chord bass chord so it's e chord with a e chord a chord you got it okay rhythm wise it's one Two, three, and four, and one. Two, three, and four, and one. Two, three, and four, and one. Okay, it's kind of like. Only in Travis picking. So, uh, you can, again, you can use the D bass. Or you can alternate your bass notes. E, A. E, D, E, A, E, D. Okay, got it? So, ready for the next exercise? I'm pretty sure you're now realizing the potential of this because we still haven't tackled single notes yet this is what we're gonna do right now so let's play this okay now it's basically the same exercise as before only this time instead of chord 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 we're playing chord second string third string okay what do i mean by that i mean that we're playing chord second string third string okay the chord is along with the second bass note and the open single strings strings two and three are between bass notes so it goes like this bass chord along with the bass bass second string bass third string again bass chord with bass bass second string bass third string okay so You can use whichever second bass note you want, either the A string or the D string, or alternate between them. It's your choice. Start improvising right now, because the sooner you start improvising with these exercises, the better you're gonna get and the more natural it will feel, 
and it will happen a lot quicker than just uh, than by just playing the exercises um, in a dry parrot like way okay so experiment with it you want to go as well go go okay Right now I think I just played E, D, E, A, E, D, E, A, okay? Now let's play um, a single note picking pattern. Let's go for this. Okay? One, three, two, three. First string, third string, second string, third string. Uh, you want to go? Go, go. All right. So, um, let's play everything between notes, between bass notes. Okay, I'm playing the, the, the D bass right now. Um, I prefer, everybody has their own preference. For example, Chet Atkins um, really loved playing the lower fifth. Uh, when you play, for example, if we if we take the E minor chord and we play the E and A strings, we're playing a fifth interval, okay? We're playing the first uh, note of the chord, the root of the chord, and then we're playing the fifth note of the chord, uh, of the scale and of the chord. So we're playing one five, one five. If we're playing the octave, we're playing one eight. And eight, of course, is one, so it's it's an octave. Now, Chad Atkins loved uh, playing the fifth, uh, the fifth note. He, so, for example, if he, if he played a B minor chord, he'd play the lower F sharp note, for example. Okay? Now, everybody has their, has their own preference, and I prefer the octave. Don't know? I just like the way it sounds. Um, sometimes I do play the fifth note. Most of the time I do. I just add it as kind of a seasoning, like seasoning on food. I just uh, I play the octave and then I add the fifth note just for harmony every now and then. That's my style. You have to find your own style and you have to experiment with different chords and see what you like. Um, so for now, just alternate between them or just pick one and stick with it and just take the second one and play that. Um, just play this with D and then play it with A and then if you want, alternate between them. It's your choice. Again, experiment with the exercises. These exercises are merely suggestions. You can take them and play whatever you want. You can change the chord, you can play a bar chord. Uh, if you want, you can play. You can play strange chords. Um, it's not a very strange chord, but it's not a minor or a major note. Or okay, you can experiment with it. We're gonna do it later. I'm gonna show you different ways you can play with the exercises. Okay, so I'm already coming up with more ideas, but let's stick with the basics first. Okay. Sorry, I have ADHD. My mind tends to wander. It's a miracle that I'm concentrating at all. Um, okay, so we we're talking about finger picking patterns. We've started. Let's. This is the first exercises that, that will enable uh, and use patterns. So the first pattern we're going to use is first string, third string, second string, third strings. Um, okay, so it's um, one, three, two, three. Okay. 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 Now let's go. Um, okay, so we said we're gonna play it between notes. Bass, first string, second bass, third string. Bass, second string, second bass, third string. 
So it's bass, one, bass, three, bass, two, bass, three. Okay? E, one, A, three. E, two, A, three. Okay? It's a lot more difficult to play it slowly than quickly. Why? Because finger picking patterns are a lot more confusing when you slow them down. It's kind of a paradox. So try to play it faster than this. Try to play it somewhere around this speed. When it makes sense. Okay? Because if you play it like this, it doesn't quite make sense rhythmically. But if you speed it up just a little, it starts to make sense. Okay? Remember to alternate the bass notes. Don't play the same bass note twice. So, between bass notes. One, three, two, three. One, three, two, three. With palm muting, it sounds like this. And it starts to sound really complicated and awesome, and it sounds very professional, but the only thing you're doing is playing a very simple pattern, one, three, two, three, with bass notes um, right before every note, so it sounds very contrapuntal, which it isn't, of course, because there is no real counterpoint going on in the classical sense because you only have one five one five one five or one eight one eight one eight, which is in reality one 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 one, the same note only in different octaves in different pitches. So uh, there is no real um, counter melody going on. So the only thing you're playing is this. Okay, but because of the bass notes, okay, if you speed it up a little, okay, it sounds as if you're playing something a lot more com uh, a lot more complicated. I, I was gonna say a lot more comfortable, a lot more complicated than it really is. So um, let's move on to the next exercise and see what we can do with kind of a mirror image of this picking pattern. Let's play the same thing, okay? The picking pattern will come between the bass notes and this time we'll play strings three, two, three, one, okay? Okay, and let's see how that sounds. Reverse the order. Okay? Bass three, bass two, bass three, bass one. Okay? That's the picking pattern. I'm pretty sure that you're starting to get the hang of it by now, so I'm allowing myself to go a bit faster and not break it down to this speed, even though this is what I'm doing right now. Okay? But let's leave the really, really slow speed out of it because if you've gotten this far, then you're doing fine. Okay, um, so this is it for the very, very simple exercises. Okay, now let's try and play all of these exercises together, okay, in sequence. So we have this. Let's put on the E minor chord with, instead of open strings. Okay, now with the chord. Okay. Now the chord between the notes. Now with the chord, with the bass, and then between the notes. Now the chord and the open string and the, um, the single strings. Now the first picking pattern. The second one. Ah. Ok, 
okay? And that's kind of a final exam. Once you can do this, move on to... Uh, actually, no, you can move on, but once you can do this and play the exercises throughout without making mistakes, as I just did just at the end there, uh, then you know that you've gotten the automatic thumb thing going. So um, that's kind of a, you know, a challenge. Now let's move on to more interesting exercises. Now, now we're gonna create some licks, okay? We're gonna create some licks. So let's take the A minor chord, okay? Now our bass notes this time are the A string and the D string, okay? Now if you want to go Chad Atkins style, you can also play A and lower E. But when you play the D string on two, that's an E note as well. So you're either playing one five, one five, one five, or one lower five. Okay, and then it sounds like this. Okay, now I'm not really used to that because uh, that's not my style. But you can use it as an exercise and just add it to your arsenal of uh, of thumb picking patterns and you can try the exercises I'm gonna give you with the lower E string if you want but that's just not my style so I'm I'm probably gonna make a fool of myself if I try to play it because um, my thumb is not used to that now um, so you see it's all a matter of practice now let's play this This is our first lick. Now, our first lick goes like this. You pull off from 1 to 0 on the B string. And then you play the, um, the third string on 2. And then you play the open E string. Okay? So it's... Where do you add the bass notes? The first bass note is along with the pull-off. The second bass note is along with the third string. And then you play the open E string, and then you play the remaining two bass notes of the bar. So. Okay, pull off with the bass, third string with the bass, open E string between bass notes, okay? Okay, there, there's actually a simpler version of this. Um, I probably should have thought of it before, but it doesn't matter if you're watching the video throughout, you can reverse the order of the exercises. Um, and you play this. Mm. Okay, just without playing the third string. That's the sim Actually, I don't really like it. Let's just stick with the previous version. It's a more complete lick. Okay? So, you can play it, um, I think you can play it twice inside a bar. Yeah, you can. This is that's your next exercise if you want. Okay? Just um play it twice in sequence. Now, uh the challenge here is to play the pull off right after the open E string. Okay, because the pull off comes along with the A bass, which is the beat, and it comes right after the open E string, which is between bass notes. So, now you can also variate and play this. Okay? 
okay and leave the e string out of it the second time and then you create kind of a question and answer lick and you can mute the strings right afterwards and then you create syncopation okay as I said experiment with this create your own version of these exercises okay so um, next exercise uh, let's see if I can read this mm. said I'm gonna make it easy on you I said we're finished with the basic easy exercises now we're gonna play licks um, now this lick goes like this slowly it sounds like this bass chord along with pull off so I'm playing the second third and fourth strings all together the fourth string of course is our second bass note so we're playing it with the thumb Okay, the thumb must keep going, so... Okay, and then I pull off from 1 to 0 on the B string. Okay, and the pull off is the note that comes between the bass notes, okay? And then I play the A bass again. Then I play just a picking pattern, I play uh, strings 2 and 3. So it's bass, 2nd string, Back on one, put your finger back on, second bass, which is our, the D string uh, in the A minor example. We're playing the D string and then we play the third string. So it's bass, two, bass, three. Okay, bass, first bass, second string, second bass, third string. Okay, so it's this. speed it up you don't have to speed it up it sounds cool as it is but I'm reversing this which you can do you can reverse it yourself and play strings three and then two okay that's another option you can play strings one and two or one and three or two and one or three and one okay or all together you can improvise and play whichever open strings come to mind and whatever your fingers want to play so you have this lick and this half lick and then the second half of the lick is up to you you can even play strings together you can play the rest of the chord um, but the basic click the basic ex uh, the basic exercise I wrote here is this half leg let's call it pull off chord pull off chord pull off second string third string why the buzz Okay, I picked it too loud. Next exercise, okay? The next exercise is this. Okay, this is a tricky lick, okay? I'm kind of a bastard for, for giving you this exercise if you're a really if you're a real beginner with Travis picking, this isn't a very easy lick. It's kind of a, it's a, it's a, it's a trick one. Um, so if this, if you find this difficult, then I apologize. Um, I just came up with exercises uh, and I wrote them down. But this is n not quite the beginner lick because um, it's not, it's not strictly on the one two one two rhythm because you have a double hammer on and it's kind of in a 
try I don't know it's it's not it it's not simply on the beat so if you find this difficult you can leave this exercise for later or you can challenge yourself and just you know take your guitar and say yeah I'm gonna play this and play this because it's not a very difficult lick it's just a bit tricky rhythmic rhythmically uh, so bass note along with a hammer on from zero to one on uh, on the B string okay okay so you play the bass note along with it and then you hammer on again from zero to one on the B string between the bass notes okay and then you play the second bass note so you have to time it right now what you can do if you find this difficult is this you can play the bass notes okay and just add the hammer-ons uh, at the beginning of the bar okay until you get it right okay now you can slow it down of course I'm just demonstrating so you'd better play it a bit slower than that Once you can hear the rhythm in your head and you can add the hammer-ons where they should be, you can play the rest of this lick, which is very, very simple. It's just um, strings one, two, and one between the bass notes. That's it. Hammer on, hammer on, bass. First string, bass. Second string, bass. First string, okay? One, two, one. 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 It's confusing to talk and play, so let's just play. Listen to this. Once you get this done under your fingers, you can pat yourself on the back and congratulate yourself because this is a tricky lick, okay? And you're on your way to play Travis Picking very freely, very naturally, very fluently. The next exercise is this. Now, in this um, in this picking pattern, I employ double stops. Now, double stops is where you pick two notes at the same time. So, you begin by this. Okay, do you recognize this? We played this before in this lick. Uh, it's the same, it's basically the same pattern, but this time, there's a small change to it because the third string comes between the bass notes. So it's a quicker lick. Instead of you've got okay. So you pull off from one to zero on the B string, along with the bass note, of course, and then you play the third string, and then you play the second bass note. So it sounds like this. Okay. Now the second half of this of this slick um, is this okay now this didn't make any sense when played this way but if we take them and tape them together it sounds like this okay now you play this then you're here at the bass you put your thumb uh, your thumb you put your uh, first finger back on the second string on one on the first fret and play strings two and three together so it sounds like this got it um, and then the rest of the lick is very easy you just play the bass the A bass 
and then play uh, the second bass note, E, two on the D string, along with the second and third strings. So you've played them separately before, and now you're gonna play them together. Okay, so it's... Okay? Now just remember, you don't play them with your fingers. Okay, it's, a, it's Travis picking, so you play them with the thumb and two fingers. Because the thumb is playing the bass notes. The thumb is separate from the rest of the fingers. It's still playing its own part. Okay, you're not playing a chord here. Okay, conceptually, you're not playing a chord. You're playing the second bass note of the chord along with another part of the chord. Okay? That's how you need to think. Because if you're thinking of this as playing the chord, okay, you're thinking about it wrong. Because the thumb is still a part of this. Okay? So that's what you need to, um, to internalize instead of just thinking of bass chord. This is not bass chord, it's bass. Second bass along with the second and third strings. Okay? It's very different because uh, your playing reflects the way you hear it and the way you think about it. Okay? It comes out in your playing. So think about it right and you'll be able to play it right. So the full lick. Okay? Pull off string, bass, second and third strings, bass. Second bass with the third and second strings. Okay, so slowly. Okay, with palm muting. It sounds different with palm muting, it sounds different in different speeds. That's the magic of Travis picking. It's very, very versatile. It's very, very simple. It's just one, two, one, two, one, two, and binary. It's either the bass notes come along with the rest of the notes or the rest of the notes come between the bass notes. That's it. And look at what you can achieve with just these four options. Four options, I mean open bass strings, um, palm muted bass notes with the bass note between the bass notes. These are your only four options. Next exercise. This time we're gonna hammer on a bass note. So we're still on A minor and let's play this. Okay? You play the bass note, you play strings two and three, and then you play the second bass note and you hammer on What's that noise? Somebody's riding a very heavy bike outside. Um, and you hammer on uh, from zero to two on the D string, on your second bass note. Okay, so you're hammering on the five. Okay, so. Okay, and you play the second and third strings um, after that bass note as well. Okay? Now, you can also do this. And add the chord along with the open D string right before the hammer on and get a variation. And play the chord again or not. I'm playing the bass note, uh, I, I exaggerated the bass note on purpose so you can hear, hear it, you know, outside of the... Okay, so... Either between the notes, or with the notes. 
notes and between the notes. Now let's change a chord. Let's take G, for example. Now let's play with the chord, okay? With uh, where we put the chord in, inside the bar. That's our next picking pattern. That's our next exercise. So, um, I'm playing um, strings E and D. Now, in, inside the G chord, um, D is the fifth note of the G chord. So, if you play G like this, then this is a D note. So, this time I, I am playing the fifth uh, interval, only this time it's on D. So, okay, now if you play the A string, uh, on two, you get the B note, and that's the third of the chord. So you can play one, three, one, three. Okay, that's a very different harmony. So uh, again, it's your choice. I like to play the G and D strings. Um, it gives, I don't know, it gives it more space. If you play this, um, it kind of sounds more spaced than this. this sounds a bit more classical um, instead of just playing playing it um, in a country feel which is the uh, the origin of Travis picking um, so it's just the chord between the bass notes and then right away you play another chord and then you play another chord between the bass notes and then you play the bass note alone, and then you play another chord between the bass notes. So it's just this. You play the bass, then you play the second bass with the chord, then you play the first bass with another chord, and then right away a chord between that uh, chord and the next bass note. So it sounds like this. And then the second bass and then another chord between the bass notes. So it's bass, chord, 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 bass, chord. Okay, like slower. Bass, chord, big, not no bass. Bass, chord, 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 bass, chord. Okay? And bass-wise it goes bass, 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 so it's really slowly, bass, chord with bass, chord, ha, bass, chord with bass, chord with bass, chord without bass, bass, chord without bass, okay? Again, very confusing to explain, very simple to play. Let me just call out the bass notes. Bass, 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 bass. Okay, so slowly. Got it? That's the lick. Palm muting. Now the next lick is a very peculiar Travis picking lick because when you get to a D chord, let, we're gonna play a D chord, okay? Uh, when you get to a D chord, what do you do with the bass notes? Because you're playing the first, second, and third strings with your fingers, um, so what do you do with the thumb? Now, the obvious answer is to play the lower bass note, to play D and A. Okay, purely country, very Chad Atkins style. Or you can go outside the box and play the second, uh, the second bass note 
uh, you can play the G string with your thumb. So when you have to play a lick and you play the D note with it, you'll use your finger. But when you play the second bass note, you'll use your thumb. So when you play a D chord, it becomes a bit more complicated. So let's leave that for the more advanced exercise videos. But we're gonna play the we're gonna play the chord like this. Okay? We're gonna play the thumb uh, all the way on D and G, the D strings. Um. Okay, we're gonna play the thumb uh, all the way. We're gonna play the D and G strings using our thumb. So um, we play the D bass, then we slide the whole chord from one, three, uh, one, two, and one, two, two, three, and two, okay? And we play the first and second strings with their designated fingers, and we play the G string with the thumb, okay? And the reason for that is that if we play it with, there are two reasons. The first reason, which are actually the same reason, but bear with me for a second. If we play them with the th these three fingers, then it's not Travis picking because we've just played the second bass note with a finger instead of the thumb, okay? So technically you're done, you're not Travis picking. And the second reason is when you use the thumb, you get a different dynamic on that string than when you play with the finger, okay? The thumb and the finger uh, get different sounds out of the string. They get a different dynamic. So it doesn't sound like Travis picking. So it's two reasons, which are actually one reason, which is if you're not playing the G string with your thumb in this lick, then you're not Travis picking it. You can play it with the fingers, okay? But then it's not Travis picking. If you play it, if you wanna play it in Travis picking, use your thumb. Okay, and the G string gets a, slider, a slightly stronger uh, attack than if you would have played it with your finger. Now you can, um, you can variate and play the A string as your second bass note, uh, and then you would play the G string with your finger. So let's play that. Okay, D bass. A bass with the slide and you need the G string as well so play it with your finger okay strings one two and three and then D bass and then a bass with strings one two and three again okay so that's a variation practice both I'm not used to picking the lower bass note, I told you. Okay, you see you get a different dynamic. Now let's play the first variation, the, the higher uh, second bass note, G string with the thumb, okay? And let's palm mute those. You see, you get a different dynamic. So you have two exercises. Um, we're almost done. We have two more exercises left. Um, the first is this. We're back to A minor and we play this. Okay, I wanted to add I wanted to I wanted to teach you a lick where you have to add a finger and do a, s a small solo over a chord. Okay, um, take your pinky and 
not yet, but you will take your pinky and add it on the third fret of the second string. So you play the A bass and then the second bass note, which is the D string, along with the second and third strings. Okay, you play the chord and then you play three on the B string with your pinky with the A bass. And then you take it off and play one on the B string, one on the second string inside the A minor chord, of course. And then you play the... Um, you played it alone, so it means that it's between bass notes. So then you play the second bass note, and then you play the E string. Okay, so again. Pinky. Okay, so. Got it? So it's bass. Chord with bass, um, D note with the bass, then between bass notes, second string, first string. Got it? You can change. Uh, you can, that's a variation. Um, you see, I let my fingers play what they wanted to play and they improvised. Instead of playing the open E string, they played the third string on two inside the A minor chord and you have a variation. play along with it uh, and improvise and just create your own exercises derived from my exercises. The final exercise for this video will be this. Let's play a C chord and we're playing this. give you a difficult exercise, right? No, I, I'm not. Uh, because I'm gonna show you what we can do with this. Um, and the difference between this, this exercise and all of the rest of the exercises is that this is a two bar exercise instead of a one bar exercise. You actually have uh, two licks here. So you play the C chord, your bass notes of course are the A and D strings. Uh, so you play the bass note, then you play the second bass note and you hammer on from 0 to 1 on the B string. And then you play the open E string between bass notes, so you play the second bass note after that. Um, so. That's the first leg. Okay? Bass, hammer on with bass, bass, E string, bass. Now the next one is playing strings two and one, then two and one again with the bass notes. Second string with the first bass, first string with the second bass twice. Once you're comfortable with this, I want you to start moving the chord around. What do I mean by that? Do whatever sounds good to you. Just find a place where the C chord can create a lick on its own. For example, if you take it uh, up three frets, then it sounds like this. If you take it once, one fret up, if you take it three frets up and then uh, one fret up, meaning two frets back down, 
then it sounds like this. Okay, you see, I want you to create your own finger style lick. Okay, using this chord only. Okay, that's the challenge. Create a lick that sounds good. Uh, for example, if we take it three frets up, let's try taking it two frets more. Okay, that sounds nice. Let's try one more fret. One more fret. Okay, you see? You get a lot more choices. Okay, so you have, and I want you to keep doing this. And before you move it around, so you do this. Okay, every time you play the first bass note in the second half of the lick, in the second bar of the lick, uh, you, you can move it around. create your own finger style lick and see just how easy it is when you just use a picking pattern and move a chord around okay because that's used a lot that's another finger picking Travis picking secret now before you go practice this please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and go download the tab from the website it's free and if you want to give something back for this lesson there's a donation button lick and riff exists on donations and whenever you donate you help lick and riff uh you help me create uh produce and create more lessons just like this one and um just donate whatever you can if you can if you can't then by all means this is free and i'm giving this uh cha this channel and this um this lesson and all of the lessons in the channel away for free you're free to learn and use my knowledge but if you can donate and want to donate i'll be more than grateful for any donation whatsoever now go download the tab subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because there's a ton of lessons in here and why not just learn uh, and get better on guitar. If you have a request, you can write me in the comments and let me know what you think and go get this under your fingers. Practice slowly, have fun, and just, you know, make your own versions of the exercises. Improvise, improvise, improvise. The more you improvise, the sooner you improvise, the better you get, the better your ear gets, the better your fingers get, and the better your music gets okay so don't dismiss this advice try it it may be difficult at first but it will get easier very quickly quicker than you think so thank you very much for watching share this lesson if you want and let others enjoy it as well and i'll leave you alone for now go practice go enjoy have fun and i'll see you the next lesson thank you very much for watching